good to see all of you this morning and God's beautiful creation. It is a beautiful day to worship God and to be outside. Muggles is here for the first time. Right now he's sitting with Dawn, but feel free to pass him around and, and let the community enjoy him during worship. That's what his job is. He's our therapy dog. So anybody needs a little snuggling, feel free to go and find Muggles. But I just want to say thank you to everyone that helped out with the Food Truck Festival. For those of you that were here, I'm sure you had a wonderful time. I know I did. It was a wonderful event, lots of people, and it was just a joy to see so many people together, especially on Hump Day. It was wonderful. <laughs> Our Women of Faith will be meeting tomorrow at 1 o'clock instead of next week because next week they're preparing for the yard sale. So if you're involved in the Women of Faith, see Susan or Eleanor if you have questions, but that will be tomorrow and not next week. Our yard sale, speaking of which, is coming up next week. It is on the 30th and on the 1st of July, and the times are in the bulletin. I believe it's 9 to 3 on Friday and 9 to 1 on Saturday. Am I correct? That's right. All right, I'm correct. So. Make sure you come out. There is tons of good items to find, lots of, lots of really great stuff, so you won't want to miss that. Our fundraising meeting is moved to uh, July 12th at 6.30 p.m., so we will not be meeting this Tuesday. We will be meeting on July 12th at 6.30, and that's a group that anyone is welcome to participate in. So if you would like to use your gifts in that way, please feel free to join that group. And VBS is coming up. We are having our Hero Hotline VBS July 24th to the 28th, and that is sure to be a great time. So make sure to sign the children up. And if you would like to volunteer, please see Colleen. Run and raise your hand, Colleen. Colleen, and uh, you can get more information. And Kelly is back there somewhere, too. So. She's on the grass. They're having their worship picnic. <laughs> But let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship by listening to our prelude. Wonderful. 
No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Who are we as Christ's church? Together, our vision is welcoming, embracing, giving, celebrating. Together, our mission is no matter who you are, we welcome everyone into our Heidelberg family, embrace the diversity of all people and their ideas, share our time, talents, and treasures with our community, and celebrate each other all through God's love. Now it is a time for us to do what we do best. If you are not comfortable standing up on the rocky grass, please stay still and somebody will come to you. But let us get up and greet one another in Christian love. <laughs> So make sure you look for that. And we will be skipping the doxology. We usually don't do that outdoors, but we have prepared our bulletins way back when. So just, just keep in mind we will be sk skipping singing the dox doxology this morning. But will you be in an attitude of prayer with me as we pray for fathers and father figures? Let's pray. Holy God. We give you thanks for the people who have been fathers and father figures in this life. And we pray for all sorts of conditions of fathers. For fathers who strive to balance the demands of work, marriage, and children with an honest awareness of both joy and sacrifice. For fathers lacking a good role model who have worked to become a good father. For fathers who by their own accord were not always there for their children, but who continue to offer those children now grown their love and support. For fathers who have been wounded by the neglected and hostility of their children. For fathers who despite divorce have remained in their children's lives. For fathers whose children are adopted and whose love and support has offered healing. For those who as stepfathers and other father figures freely choose the obligation of being a role model, earning their children's love and respect. For fathers and father figures who have lost a child to death and continue to hold the child in their heart. For those who have no children, but cherish the next generation as if they were their own. For those who have fathered us in their role as mentors and guides. For those who are about to become fathers, may they openly delight in their children. And for those fathers and father figures who have died, but live on in our memory and in the communion of your saints, whose love continues to nurture us. Almighty God, who is both father and mother to us all, we ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Our opening hymn is The Summons, or Will You Come and Follow Me, as printed in your bulletin. worship. This is a time of God's appearing. Let us worship. Let us recognize that God is within and among us. God's ear is inclined toward us. We know that God listens and hears our prayers. God bears us up on eagle's wings, draws us into covenant community. We will listen for God's commandments. We will seek to do all that God requires. Now is the time for us to share the things we're not so proud of with our God. It's time for us to share our sins, our regrets, and our wrongdoings. First, in silence. Now joining our voices together in the prayer of confession. God, we often fail to recognize that you are always with us. We are the only ones who deny your love by our failure to love. We deny your law by our failure to live by it. We laugh at your promises. We appear more burdened than joyful in the midst of wondrous gift of life. We seldom pause to give thanks. 
the compassion of Christ finds little echo in us. We thank you to be present. We need your forgiveness, O oh God, and a new vision. Amen. Our God is a God of many second chances. Our God wants a right relationship with us. Through the power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ, we are indeed a forgiven people. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. The first scripture reading for today is a responsive reading of Psalm 116 verses 1 to 2 and 12 to 19. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. He has been kind and dear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. The gospel reading for today is from Matthew chapter 9 verses 35 through chapter 10 verse 8. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon of Canaan, and Judas Issachar, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the, 12, with the following instructions. Do not take a road leading to Gentiles, and do not enter a Samaritan, Samaritan town, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, Cleanse those with a skin disease, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. <clears throat> Will the children that are here come forward for the children's chat? Are they going to come forward or are they going to just sit where they are? <laughs> a little busy. Are you a little busy? Well, I'll talk from here, okay? Hi, Cameron. I see you back there. <laughs> I'll talk from here. And I guess this is for all of you, but I only have enough of these for the children. So I'm sorry. If you really want one, see me afterward, and I'll make sure you get one, okay? <laughs> but today our sermon title is Traveling Instructions. So today for you children and you adults, I'm going to give you a few traveling instructions for this summer. What I would like you to do this summer is to pay attention to where you see God, where you see God at work. Now, what do I mean by that? How is it easy to see God at work? Can anybody give me an example of how you see God at work? Nature. In nature? How else? In a beautiful day. People helping other people. People helping other people. In the healing of the sick. Healing of the sick, caring for others. 
Yeah, those are all great ways. I think for me, it all boils down to love. When I see love, that's where I see God. So as you are going along your summer, I have a travel journal for you, and it is a journey with Jesus. So what I would like you kids to do, and I'll give them out to you, is I would like you to either draw a picture or write down some places and some things that you see God in the world or Jesus in the world. And then maybe at the end of the summer, you can come and see me and we can talk about all of the places all summer long that you saw God at work. Sound good? All right. Will you play? Please. Oh, I can't talk this morning. Will you please pray with me? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for being everywhere we go. Help us to recognize you in our midst. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. <coughs> we have the joy of hearing about vacations from our members. Vacations that they may have taken recently or maybe a vacation in the past that was especially meaningful. And so this morning our first speaker is Colleen. Colleen, would you come forward? Uh, as I was growing up and 
uh, as the families expanded and they all kind of moved a little further apart. So trying to get together is not easy. So when the, after the October event, I found out from my mom that uh, the event wasn't as attended as, as how she had hoped. Uh, some people got sick, some people had you know, things come up, pop up that they couldn't avoid. And so she decided she wanted to hopefully try again in the spring. Well, when I heard this, I contacted her right away and said, let's coordinate this so I can get a plane ticket and be there. So we did, we picked a date in May and I was able to get a plane ticket and fly out there. So um, I was out there for 10 days in May. I was out, uh, flew out on the 13th. On the 14th, I got to spend Mother's Day and my, which was also my mom's 82nd birthday. So I got to spend that with my family. And then I also, the next day, on the, the following Tuesday, I got to go visit with a friend who was my college friend and she was also my maid of honor in my wedding out there. No, I had not been able to see her for a while because uh, her kids are a little bit younger than mine and we just seemed like every time I was out there, she lived a little further out in San Jose so we could never coordinate our schedules. <coughs> so this time I was able to uh, go out and have lunch with her and it also happened to be her birthday that day. So it made it extra special to share that time with her. I uh, got to go spend, uh, I got to go see another school friend uh, she's a friend that was my best friend since sixth grade. And in, then we kind of separated, you know, kind of parted a little bit, and then we got back together again. Some of you might have heard of my friend Janelle, who uh, went through a very, uh, a very bad medical episode. Um, I put her name on the prayer list many years, for a very long time. She's on a, doing very well and getting her life back together now. And... I actually worked it out with her friend who had taken her in uh, to help support her, and uh, we surprised her. I actually showed up at the restaurant and stayed there, and then when they showed up, I was hiding, and when, as she was coming down the steps, I popped out and, and uh, surprised her. So she was very shocked and very happy, and we had a lovely dinner. And then I went over to uh, my other best friend's house, also known her since sixth grade. Uh, we spent the night there and then we were joined by a higher high school friend the next day. We went out to uh, Wheatland, California to the Hard Rock Hotel, which is up towards Sacramento. And we got to go to a concert together. We got to go see country singers, uh, Brett Young, uh, Ashley, um, oh my gosh, her name just went out of my head, Ashley. Ashley, oh my gosh, I love her, and I can't, her name just like totally went out of my head. It's going to drive me crazy. Cook, Ashley Cook, Ashley Cook, Morgan Allen, and Brett Young. And uh, it was a fabulous concert, and being able to do that with my really close friends was just phenomenal. And we had a wonderful time. Uh, but before we could go to the concert, they had to take me over to Boot Barn because they both had cowboy boots and I did not. So they made me go get cowboy boots. So I got my first pair of cowboy boots. So that was pretty fun. I was excited about that. And so we enjoyed this awesome concert together. The next day happened to be our friend Gail's birthday. So, so yeah, I had a lot of birthdays that week. So we spent the day together. Um, Erica had to go pick up her son so Gail and I went and met another high school friend who came down from Northern California over, over six and a half hours to get together with us. Uh, he was part of our little group that we always hung out together in high school. So we played, uh, we went to the bocce ball court and played bocce ball and uh, had a big competition. And then we all got, then we all re met up back together for dinner that night and had a wonderful dinner of all of us together and celebrated Gail's birthday. The fun, finally, uh, that night, late that night, <laughs> very late that night, I picked up Chris and my daughter Danica from the airport, and the next day we were able to go to our family gathering at my cousin's house. It was a really wonderful time. 
We had 49 people there. Uh, we only were missing two cousins and my older daughter, Sarah, and her husband. So it was quite the attendant gathering, and it was so good to see everybody and their families. I tend to mostly see people on Facebook, so it was a little surreal seeing everybody in person for a change. We had a wonderful gathering and a wonderful time, and with the help of Danica, we got a after we actually got a big group picture of all of us together. So that was really amazing. We spent time at my sister's house with my nieces and their families, and did dinner, and my with my great nephew there. He was he's a real kick. He's a lot of fun to be around, and we just everything. It was just a truly blessed trip. I couldn't have asked for anything better. Um, we, the family time that we had, uh, everything went smooth. Nothing ever felt rushed or, in, and just the, the opportunity to spend so much time with family and friends that I, in past trips was always rushed or here, running here and there. And this time it wasn't like that. It was a truly a wonderful experience. So that was my travel story for today. <laughs> time, a lot of love shared between family and friends, lots of love. So how do you prepare to go on vacation? Just think about that for a minute. How do you prepare to go on vacation? Make a checklist of the things I need to know. Oh, I was yeah. just going to say, are you a list maker? <laughs> so you make that checklist, right? Right. How many of you study where you're going? Look it up, Google it, yeah? Yeah, try and figure out all the places that you want to see. Do you fill up your itinerary? Do you schedule? Is anybody a scheduler? Yeah. Filling up? Yeah? yeah? Fill up your itinerary so you make sure you see everything and get everything done, right? Or do you kind of just go with the flow? Anybody here spirit-led kind of just plan their vacation and go? I, I'm good. I'm one of those. I'm one of those spirit-led people. I like to just kind of go with the flow and do what I'm doing. So I'm getting ready to go on vacation, as you all know. On Tuesday, I begin my vacation, and I thought I would share how I prepared for my vacation. I pretty much haven't done a thing. <laughs> I've caught up on some ministry things to make sure that the church was going to be really good for this next week. But other than that, I really haven't done anything. I didn't make a checklist. I didn't have to learn another language or download Google Translate on my phone. I didn't really fill up my schedule with lots of things to do. And that's because this time it's a staycation. Has anyone been on staycations, spending some time at home, right? I'm staying close to home because my husband started a new job. John started a new job and he works a swing shift now. So this week is his first week working nights, 6.30 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. And with three dogs in the house, I think it's important I stay home to make sure that he gets some sleep, at least the first week. And we want to see how the dogs do and if they're okay while he's trying to get some sleep. He just put up vellum on the, on the windows that black out the sun. I walked into our room this morning and it's completely dark. So I don't know how I'm going to wake up in the morning. <laughs> but I did kind of think about some things that I would like to do next week. One of those is to spend a little bit more time crafting. I love to craft and I don't have enough time for it. Another one is to get exercise back into my daily routine because I've kind of slacked for about 10 years. <laughs> I'd also like to get a little time away from my phone. Do any of you try and shut down and unplug a little bit while you're on vacation? Yeah, yeah, we all need that time to unplug a little bit. My daughter, on the other hand, just got prepared to leave for Lithuania. Right now, as we speak, she's over in Lithuania for work. 
she had a lot of traveling instructions. She had traveling instructions for what she needed to bring, what time to be there, what time to board the plane, who to talk to, who not to talk to. She had to uh, transfer some money into euros to spend while she was there. So she had an awful lot of traveling instructions. And our disciples, now known as apostles, we're getting some traveling instructions today from Jesus in our reading. But what I found interesting about this reading is that they were instructed not to go down the roads that lead to the Gentiles or the Samaritans. It's almost like Jesus wanted them to do a staycation, caring for people in their own community before heading out to the world and the nations. Now, Colleen, certainly didn't do a staycation, right? She drove, flew out to California. So she certainly did not do a staycation. Yet she was going home. She was with her peeps. She was with the people that she knows best, her family and her friends and those she cares for. So friends, it's important to remember that whether we are home or we are far away from home, to follow Jesus to heal, to care for those that we love, to spread God's love out into the world, in our community and beyond. Because when we show hospitality and we show care for others, whether they are our family and friends or a complete stranger, we are sharing God's love all the time, everywhere we go. So as you begin to prepare for those summer vacations, whether you're staying around home or you're traveling abroad or anywhere else in our world. Remember that no matter who you're with and no matter where you are, remember the two most important traveling instructions of Jesus Christ, to love God and to love neighbor. May it be so. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. For the church here and around the world, we pray. Seek out disciples and send them with authority to proclaim good news. Bring healing where there is pain and counter the forces of evil. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the earth and all its creatures, we pray. Equip farmers, farm workers, and all who labor on the land to produce a harvest. Nourish crops with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Restore lands ruined by pollution or misuse. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who govern, we pray. Empower those who seek peaceful solutions to conflict and embolden those who advocate for all who are oppressed. Work through systems of government to establish justice throughout the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who suffer, we pray. Accompany those who feel helpless, alone, or abandoned. Embrace any who long for successful treatment for mental illness or freedom from addiction. Heal those who are sick. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen those who feel faint. Give courage to those who fear. And bring wholeness to those in need, especially Carol and Steve, Sharon, Reds, Jim, Kyle, Maria, Heather, Juneteenth, Craig, Dolores, Carol, Lori, Doug, Gabe, Mark, Gloria, Sally, the Kensick family, Wilmer, Margie, Jean, Don, Nancy, Ruth, Ed and Deb, Tim, and Haley. For those on the prayer chain, we keep in our prayers, and for those not mentioned in our hearts. We also pray for our weekly partner in ministry, Hope Church in Cherryville, this week. Bless them as they continue serving Christ in the community and beyond. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who first taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven. 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever.
say. Help us to use these gifts that we give back to you, to your glory. May they be multiplied and spread out into the world near and far, sharing your love. And we dedicate these offerings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is, They'll Know We Are Christians, and it is in your bulletin. every mountain Judy oh the memories just came streaming back to me when I had my last Sunday at first Christian our minister of music who was an excellent singer excellent singer played it and sang it for for the last service so it just the the memories just came flooding back but I'm sure those of you that have seen sound of music over and over and over and over again probably memories of different things came back to you too right yeah, so go from this place, holding on to good memories, holding on to them tight. At the same time, make new ones. Share your love, share Christ's peace out into our world. Because you are loved. You are beloved. Now share that love with others. Amen. Amen. Amen.